So bioengineering is cool. I went around and asked a couple of people, what's the first thing that comes to mind when they hear the words biological engineering? A lot of them said cyborgs, which, I mean, sure, I guess we can blame that one on the film industry. But that's about where my level of understanding was when I first began my journey into bioengineering. It was a few years ago. I was starting college, and I was about to begin a major in bioengineering, but all I really knew was the Wikipedia definition. <laughs> so, you know, that wasn't great. But I was excited, and I was curious, and I was at one of the best places in the world to be those two things. So I went out, I stumbled around, and I came across this subdiscipline called synthetic biology. Does anyone here know what that is? Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, so I went back to my old friend Wikipedia, and that was not helpful. In fact, anywhere that I looked, all I could find were these incredibly complex, very obscure definitions that did nothing for someone who knew nothing to start. So, like every great student, I faked it. <laughs> you know, I knew that synthetic biology had something to do with biological engineering, with changing life, and I would learn from there. As it turns out, humans have been studying the living world for years, decades, centuries. That's what we fondly know of as biology. And even with that long history of inquiry and discovery, we still only understand a fraction of what it is that makes life work. Yes, we've discovered the human genome and some of that other trivial stuff, but in the end, as a whole, we don't know what it is that makes all of the individual pieces inside of us come together to create this incredible phenomenon. And that's where I started. But from that black box mess, synthetic biology is the practice of reaching in and pulling out what you need to build some whole new machine that functions in a way that you decide, a way that you define. It's taking the illogical and making something logical, and that is pretty radical. When you think of some of the more prominent developments of today, biofuels for renewable energy, medications in a pharmacy, an impossible burger or a floral perfume, synthetic biology did that. And perhaps even more impressively, synthetic biology is doing that building a novel tool or system that behaves predictably while using biological materials that you don't know the exact function and purpose of. But in doing that, synthetic biologists come up on lots of failures. It's not a concept that's unfamiliar to any scientist, researcher, engineer, high school student. Failure is a part of anything that we can do and accomplish. But when you're working in such a novel space, every failure is an opportunity for some incredible success. I recall my very own first synthetic biology research project. My team and I wanted to cure Alzheimer's disease. Now, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. It's a brain disease that causes problems with memory, reasoning skills, behavior, and it affects millions of people and their families around the world. And the kicker is, it can't be definitively diagnosed without a brain autopsy. You won't know until after the patient has already passed away. It was Alzheimer's, this big, scary, destructive disease that my team and I wanted to tackle. And we wanted to build a biological device that could detect the signs of Alzheimer's before you got it and treat it so that the disease never showed up. Well, we failed. Many times over at every single step of the way. We were trying to build something completely new with biology. So every time that we did fail, we found something else that we had no idea about before. And that was incredibly enlightening. In the end, we never did cure Alzheimer's disease. I mean, if we had, I would be giving a totally different talk. 
<laughs> but what we did do was design and build a tool that could potentially be used to detect uh, with 100% certainty Alzheimer's pre-mortem before the symptoms took hold and ruined a life. And that's just one disease. What about all the rest? Could we use synthetic biology to eliminate malaria, treat diabetes, cure cancer? Or how about to make removable, replaceable body parts, or grow clothing, or build a dragon? Well, I've got news for you. All of those projects actually already exist. There is a growing contingent of people around the world who are thinking about how to use biology to bring humanity into the future, to improve our transportation, manufacturing processes, living conditions, improve our overall quality of life. And that, you see, is all about stretch goals. Synthetic biology is all about imagining the most outlandish, most ambitious thing that you could ever think of doing, and then finding a way to do it with biology. Right here in Union City, perhaps even right here in this room, there exists a wealth of talent an opportunity for synthetic biology to advance this city's missions of compassion and sustainability? What if we could literally grow a roof over the head of every person, regardless of socioeconomic status? Or maybe we could make all waste such that it's biodegradable and non-toxic, so Union City no longer contributes to landfills or any other form of environmental pollution. That one? is what I want to do for my PhD. Now, what's the most outlandish, futuristic, coolest thing that you can think of? Now go build it with biology. Stumble, trip, maybe even fall along the way, but revel in the experience, revel in knowing that you are building a defined product with completely undefined materials. And at the end of the day, Synthetic biology is really just three things. The past, the present, the future. <laughs>